Hello, my name is Sean Omer. I'm executive director here at the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art. Thank you for joining me today. The year 2020 marks the 125th anniversary of the founding of the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art. It was back in 1895 that a group of Cedar Rapidians who had been to the 1893 World's Fair in Chicago and visited the Fine Arts Building there decided that Cedar Rapids needed an arts organization of its own. And so they founded an art club in 1895. The art club didn't have a home until 1905 when the Carnegie Library opened. In the design for the Carnegie Library, a space was set aside, a gallery space that would be used by the art club, which was by then known as the Cedar Rapids Art Association. It was here in the Carnegie Library that the Cedar Rapids Art Association began its long and extensive history of presenting temporary exhibitions. It was also here that it began its collection, acquiring its first two pieces in 1906 through the auspices of various local groups who provided the funds for these pieces. The collection began very modestly. In the first 15 years of collecting, the association had only acquired 13 works. Many of those works were on view in the public library and the gallery space was set aside for temporary exhibitions. The Cedar Rapids Art Association lived very happily in the Carnegie Library until the mid-1960s, when the growth of the collection dictated that they find a new space. They found that space in the old Torch Press building, which they had recently renovated, and they moved around the corner from the Carnegie Library into their new spaces, where they expanded their exhibition program, they expanded their collection, and they also offered art instruction. In the mid-1980s, the Cedar Rapids Public Library moved out of the Carnegie Library and the building sat vacant. The city came to the Cedar Rapids Art Association and asked if they would be interested in moving back into the Carnegie Library building. The association, which by then was known as the Cedar Rapids Art Museum, was very interested in the building, but it simply was not large enough to accommodate their growing collection. And so a deal was struck where the land between the western side of the public library and the railroad tracks was cleared and purpose-built galleries designed by Charles Moore were constructed and the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art moved into its newly expanded space where it resides currently back in 1989. Now we're standing in the Corton Atrium, which is a part of the Charles Moore edition, which opened in 1989. Charles Moore is best known as a postmodern or deconstructivist architect. That means he takes the principles of architecture and turns them on their heads. So you will see in this atrium a wide variety of colors that people don't normally associate with architecture. You will see that he massed his columns with the smallest elements on the bottom and the biggest elements on top, which is in direct contrast to the way most buildings are built. And you can see that throughout the entire planning of both the gallery wing and this atrium, that Charles Moore was being very, very respectful of the Carnegie Library onto which he was attaching his addition. In fact, the capitals that you see in the Horton Atrium are directly modeled on the capitals that one finds in the original Carnegie Library. But he's done it in his own way. He wanted to create a building that was very much of the 80s, not a building that was of 1905. And he successfully blended both current architecture from the 1980s with the historical Beaux-Arts architecture that one finds in the Carnegie Wing. Now we're standing in the first floor of the gallery wing. The Cedar Rapids Museum of Art has two floors of galleries, eight galleries on each floor. When a visitor comes to the gallery wing, one of the first places that they go is to the gallery dedicated to the work of Grant Wood. The Grant Wood collection is one of the great gems of the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art. It is why we attract visitors from all 50 states and 25 foreign countries each and every year. But we hope that when they come and learn about Grant Wood through our collection, that they also go into the other galleries and see other artists and are exposed to other Midwestern and Iowa artists that we have on view. To that end, directly opposite the Grant Wood Gallery, we have a gallery dedicated to his best friend, Marvin Cohn. And between these two galleries, we have a temporary exhibition called Beyond the Prairie, where we have brought up a variety of Iowa and Midwestern artists from the collection, works that were not normally meant to be hung together, but helped to celebrate the great creative power that exists here in Iowa and the Midwest. 
Now is a particularly good time to visit the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art because five of our eight galleries on the first floor are dedicated to a temporary exhibition called 125, 125 Masterworks from the Collection. This exhibition celebrates our 125th anniversary and brings out a number of works that have not been out in a while. These works do not normally hang together, but they do hang together beautifully in this particular installation. This exhibition not only celebrates the incredible collection of the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art, which now numbers nearly 8,000 pieces, but it also celebrates the community which helped to make this collection possible, either through direct donations of works of art or by contributing funds to help us acquire the works of art to grow our collection and to fill in any gaps that our collection might have in telling the story of primarily American art and especially American art of the 20th and 21st centuries. On the second floor, we have four galleries dedicated to the work of Maurizio Lazansky, a master printmaker who spent most of his career in Iowa City. We have over 230 works by Maurizio Lazansky in the collection. What most people don't realize is that we change these works every six months. All four galleries are deinstalled and new works are brought up and the works that are deinstalled are stored on site and will not be represented for another two and a half to three years. So when you come to the Museum of Art and you go through the Lazansky galleries, be sure to take a look because those works, while by the same artist, are always changing. Also on the second floor, stop by and take a look at the Roman Gallery. We have 23 Roman portrait busts that were donated to us by Tom and Nan Riley, and we have created a gallery specifically for them. We are the only museum in the state of Iowa with a Roman collection like this, and it is well worth a visit. It is frequently used by school groups when they come to the museum because it's a great way to teach about art and life in the Roman times. Also on the second floor is another gallery dedicated to temporary exhibitions. Currently, we have an exhibition of the work of local artist Mary Zarin, who is celebrating 10 years of art making as a professional full-time artist. Supporting local artists has been part and parcel of the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art's history from the very beginning, and includes such notable artists as Grant Wood and Marvin Cohn. This exhibition was specifically chosen during our 125th anniversary year because we wanted to make sure that we dedicated at least one slot in our exhibition season to supporting and presenting the work of a local artist. Thank you for joining me today for this brief overview of the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art. And thank you for your support of the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art. For the past 125 years, our success has been directly linked to the support of this community. Who knew 125 years ago that a small art club would eventually become the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art and that we would be alive and thriving 125 years later? Thank you for your support in making us the organization that we are today. Here's to another 125.